this week, we're going to be ministering on the three Hebrew boys. Because this is a huge thing in our life. Because we do not have a lot of pressure in our Christianity, there are a lot of people that compromise on a consistent basis. Let's, let, let's start in the verse. Here we go. Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. And we'll get to that in the message in another hour or so. Glory to Jesus. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the, golden, the gold image which you have set up. In our walk with God, we are constantly going to have the opportunity to leave faith. We are constantly going to be given that privilege, and this is the part of free will that I absolutely hate. I really wish that once saved, always saved was true. But the truth is, is that we all have opportunity and privilege to serve God or walk away from God. And on a constant basis, as our Christian Christianity grows and maturates, we are going to have the opportunity to continue to walk by faith and not by sight, or to literally spin and turn and walk away from the God that we serve. I cannot tell you, in fact, it would fill this church more than it's already full on a Sunday morning of people that have once walked with Jesus and they've come up with all the excuses to walk away. But that is not what's going to get you to glory. That is not what's going to get you successful. That is not what's going to bring you into prosperity. That is not what's going to get you to fulfill your destiny. Jesus has a plan for you. God needs you. This is not about religion. This is about you and I fulfilling God's very purpose for our lives. And the Lord is raising up an army of faith that when the king says move, we will move. But yet if we cannot obey the simple, we'll never obey the much. These three Hebrew boys, listen, just like Daniel, because they were all taken together. They all had the excuses. I have heard the excuses that you could just... I have watched people surrender their walk with God for the most asinine things that they could ever imagine. A few extra dollars on a Sunday. Listen, now, I'm not knocking on nurses and on people that have no choice to work on Sundays. That's why we have a 9 a.m. service for you. But there are people that literally will surrender their walk with God, their church on Sunday morning for another dollar. I'm here to tell you it's time to make a decision. The mighty dollar is not mighty anymore. It's the king of kings and the lord of lords that will get you to heaven. You can't buy your way there. You can't earn your way there. It's only Jesus. Can I hear an amen? These guys had it all. They lost their home. They lost it. They, they didn't even live in the same area. They lost their mom and dad. They lost their freedom religion. In fact, they even lost their name. There are a lot of people with a lot of losses. Well, I'm not going to serve God because so-and-so died. I'm not going to serve God because I prayed and nothing happened. I'm not going to serve God because I don't like the pastor. I'm not going to serve God because I got mad at somebody in the church and they hurt my feelings. I'm not going to serve God because I don't seem to fit in. I'm not going to serve God. Listen, now the list goes on. You will always have an excuse. The devil will always make sure you have opportunity. The devil will always give you opportunity to walk away from your faith. But I'm here and I'm declaring the word of God in your life that if you walk away from Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith, that you will have no faith and if you continue to continue to walk away from the very principles of his word you will struggle you will strive and you will fall and you will die God must have a church in the end days he's raising up that church of the end days that is going to reap a harvest and we have got to learn how to walk by faith because we are not always going to be accepted now, just because you're 9 a.m. service don't mean you can be quiet on me. Can you imagine losing your name? My name is Michael. Like unto God. <laughs> 
my mother walk by faith, that is for sure. Can you imagine having the name Michael? Can you imagine having your name, and now you have lost your mother, you have lost your father, you have lost your brothers and your sisters, you have lost your town, you have lost everything that you known as normal, you have lost your freedom of religion, and now they not only take that, but now they take your name and they strip you of the name that meant life to you, and now you are going to get a name that means nothing. Everybody's got an excuse. Listen to this. Haniah means God has favored. He got the name Shabak, means a great scribe. Mishael, that's my name. That's my name. Who is uh, who is about, who is what God is? He got the name Meshach, a guest of the king. Azariah, Jehovah has helped. Abednego means servant of Nebo. The names that meant life to them were now stripped from every excuse that they had, every opportunity they had to walk away from their faith was presented to them, and yet they had to make a choice and a decision because walking with Jesus is not always easy. Can I hear an amen? Walking with Jesus doesn't mean you're always going to be accepted. Say amen. Walking with Jesus doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect. Can I hear an amen? But it's learning how, not when the trouble comes, but what you're going to do when the trouble comes. It's not that trouble's not going to come. You ever seen that that owl? He's licking the lollipop. How many licks does it take before you get to the center? One, two, two. That's two. The crunch does not count as a lick. I know the younger people don't have a clue. This is for us old folk. How many untils, how many excuses does it take till we walk away? There has got to come a gumption in your umption. There has got to be a fervor within the fire. There has got to be a backbone in your body. There have got to be frontlets on your eyes when you finally make a decision. I don't care what happens to me. I don't care what people say about me. I don't care what people do to me. I don't care what happens in this world. I'm making a decision. I'm going to follow Jesus all the way. And no matter what it costs me, I refuse to turn away. Until the Christian makes that decision, until we make, oh, listen now, I say it all the time in premarital counseling, please look at each other, gaze into each other's eyes and say, divorce is not an option. Listen, the moment divorce becomes an option in your marriage, you will be divorced. The moment divorce becomes an option in your relationship with Jesus, you will be divorced. These boys had the opportunity. Their food was stripped away, and they were trying to be given food that was unclean, and they made a decision with Daniel that we're going all the way with God. It doesn't matter what the king does to us. I know i got to hurry. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. This dream was one that he could not interpret himself, and this is what he did. He said, everybody who cannot interpret the dream, every wise man, every rich, you know, he goes through all the guys that he gets his counsel from. Everybody who cannot, listen now, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys were included. Anybody who cannot, kill him. So can you imagine, you know, come to church on a Sunday morning and say, I'm just going to kill everybody who can't interpret my dream. How many might not stay? Or how many would just simply pray real hard? When Daniel found out, God gave him the interpretation. And in the interpretation, praise the Lord, God was faithful. He delivered his sons and his daughters. He delivered even Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. Daniel was risen to the highest position he could ever achieve, even as a servant and as a slave. God raised him up. God will always give you favor. He did it with Joseph. He did it with Moses. Come on now, he did it with Abram. God will always give you favor when God is number one in your life. 
God gave him favor. And then he said, listen now, those three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, man, these guys need to be raised up too. So they were raised up. Man, God was using their lives. Nebuchadnezzar gets a little pride in his bones, and he says, now, let's create. And I, I saw the vision. You know, Daniel, he interpreted the vision. The God of Daniel interpreted it. Let's, let's, build, let's build ourselves an image of gold, nine foot wide and 90 feet high. That's big. Just barely wider than this. And 90 feet tall. And he said, every single person on this planet, everybody who's under my reign, you will bow the moment the music sounds. You will bow and you will worship that idol. And if you do not worship that idol, you'll die. Let's be honest. In Christianity, how many of you have, this is good, how many of you have been laughed at because of your walk with Jesus? Man, it should be going up. You know. That's good. No, really, that's good. It didn't feel good, Pastor. But it's good. It means you're taking a stand. Do you realize that if no one ever confronts you about your walk with God, that probably means you're not walking with God? That was just an encouragement. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. It means that you're not walking. It means you're just coming to church. Mm. We're awful quiet this morning. You are going to be given opportunity after opportunity. We are given opportunity after opportunity to abandon our faith. Wasn't it enough that they had to give up their home? Where's God? Wasn't it enough that they had to give up their freedom of religion? Where's God? Wasn't it enough that they had to give up their names? Where is God? Wasn't it enough that they had to give up the food? Where is God? Come on now. Every one of us have asked that question. Be a liar. Every one of us have prayed and something didn't happen the way we thought or something happened that we didn't think should. And we sat back, where are you, God? God is big enough to handle the question. But what you do in decision with that opportunity, remember, it's not a bad thing that a bird flies over your head, but you could never let him nest in your hair. How a man thinks so he is. So the moment that thought comes in your mind, you're going to think the thought. You might even say it out of your mouth. But God wants you to know today that he is able. God is able to deliver. Don't abandon your faith. Don't walk away from your God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the earth. Come on now, I'll do abundantly above all you could ask or imagine. Keep your eyes on me, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't walk away. Don't bow your knee. What are you bowing your knee to? You see, because anything that's in front of God means you're bowing your knee. Anything you can't get rid of, talking material things, I'm not talking to your husband. Anything you cannot give away owns you. You don't own it, which means it is taken precedence as your God. Your job. If your job is your all in all, it has now become your God. If your spouse is more important than Jesus, you got issues coming. Because they should never be the Sunday, only the cherry on top. Where and what have you bowed your knee to? 
You see, this is where the most difficult part of Christianity is, where we've honestly got to be honest with ourselves. It's no problem looking at somebody else and seeing all their mess. Come on now. I can tell you your mess. We can tell everybody else, but so few Christians actually want to get on their face and say, search me, oh God, and know my heart today. God, reveal to me truthfully what is before you. So, God, that I can get rid of it. Lord, I can put it aside. I'm here to say today in the kingdom of God that it's time for the church to again love God more than anything else on this planet. And until we do, we are still just playing church. Oh, I know these sermons, the sermons that drive people out of church, not drive them to church. But guess what? God's not as interested in filling the church as he, as he is in building his church. Neb! We're not going to bow. We're not going to bow. Oh, but come on, just bow. God will understand. God will understand if you bow. God will give you, it'll be all right. God, listen now, if you bow, God will forgive you. You know that he has to forgive you, so just bow your knee. Don't let anybody else think bad of you. As a Christian. We've got to make a decision. What are we willing to bow to? Some of you have bowed for a little bit of nook nook. Some of you have bowed for a little bit of booze booze. Most people have bowed for acceptance. It's time to say, Jesus, the only knee that I'm going to bow is to you. And when you make that decision, I want you to know that it's not going to be beautiful. That everybody in your family is not going to run and say, wow, you have so changed. I want to be just like you. Usually when you start to not bow your knee but to anyone but God, immediately, I've heard it, I've heard it said, Pastor, my wife or my husband said they liked me better as a drunk. My friends don't want to hang with me anymore because I won't go to have a beer with them. What are you, some religious freak now? No, I'm saved, sanctified, bought by the Holy Ghost. i got Spirit of God living inside of me. I'm going to walk it, and I'm going to talk it. I'm going to live for Jesus the whole way through. It's time to know that, man, you are going to give an opportunity to bow your knee. And when you refuse to bow your knee, it's not all going to be perfect. The world, the devil's going to come against you. They're going to try to draw you away. But you've got to make a decision in your spirit. I'm not turning to the right or to the left. I'm not going to love this world more than I love God. I refuse to allow the abundance of sin on this planet to steal the very love I have for Jesus. I'm going all the way with my God no matter what the cost. Listen now, this is what they said. The children, those three Hebrew children were standing before the king and this is what they said. Man, I want to tell you, this took, this took chutzpah. The king said, listen, I heard you won't bow. Then Nebuchadnezzar in a fury and rage gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true? Is it true? Is it true you won't bow? Is it true when I sounded the music, you won't bow your knee? Is it true that you won't be like everyone else? Is it true that you won't follow the ways of my world instead of the ways of your God? Is it true that you're unwilling to sacrifice anything? Is it true? Is it true for you? Because they said, no, we won't bow. Their last opportunity. Nebuchadnezzar looked and he said, I want you dead. You know, it 
it's really hard when people don't like you anymore. Can I at least hear an amen? You know, by nature, we all want to be liked. By nature, no one wants to be judged. And by nature, we want to be able to live the life of choice without anybody coming against us. Well, listen, baby. They won't come against you when you're with them. They only come against you when you're against them. You're not going to have to worry about your friends as long as you're sipping the brewskis with them. Cussing with them. You're not going to have to worry about that. You're not going to have to worry about your friends when you're sparking up the joint or, or roll, roll, rolling a blunt. And talking about Jesus. They'll even accept you. They'll let you talk about Jesus while you roll the blunt. The man or the woman you've been sleeping with, they're okay with you going to church as long as you don't bungee up your legs, ladies. They're okay with you as long as it doesn't affect them. But the moment you tar start making a stand, it's going to affect them. Why? Because the life that you're living now is with the Son of God. And you're going to live righteous. You're going to live walking before the Lord. I didn't say you're going to be perfect, but you're not going to compromise. And when you don't compromise, this is what happens. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar wasn't just angry. He was in a rage. He said, you won't bow before my God. You won't bow before my image. You won't do what you're told. This is what I'm going to do to you. This was your last opportunity. And because you chose not to take the opportunity to get free, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to destroy you. I'm not going to just do it this way. I'm going to fire up that furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been before. And when you get in there, you'll be absolutely destroyed. And he didn't just give the command. He sat back to watch the event. Your friends will watch the event. They want to see you fall. Can I see, can I see those things? I, I'm in trouble. I'm so late. You ever see those? Uh, I forget what they call them. You know, they were, those, they were dummies about this big. You blew them up. And they were weighted on the bottom. Oh, what were they called? Yeah, what were they called? No, that's a weeble wobble, but they don't fall down. They're this big. Bozo. They had a bozo the clown one. They had a punching bag. How many of you are old enough to remember that? Don't raise your hand. What are you crazy? He's sitting there watching, and he's waiting so that when he punches, when he throws him in the fiery furnace, boom, they're going to pop. But this is what I love about my God. He very rarely is early. Can I hear an amen? I've chatted with him about it. We've talked about it. I've tried to convince him otherwise, but he is very rarely early. But he always shows up. All of a sudden, the king says, I want them in the furnace. I want them destroyed. I want them dead. So they fire up the furnace seven times hotter. And even the man of valor that came to bring them, he was so destroyed because the furnace, Bruce, you were destroyed. Destroyed, dead. Bye. Die. Thank you. He was destroyed because the furnace was so hot, even when they got close, it burned him up. Dead. They were the three Hebrew boys. And this is what I love so much about our Jesus. You see, when you have faith in God, this is the verse we started off with. You remember? He said this. Verse 18. King, our God will deliver us from this furnace. 
But if not, let it be known to you that we're never going to bow. All of a sudden, the king looked over, and he no longer saw three, but he saw four. And the fourth one, the Bible says, was as the Son of Man. I'm here. I'm going to declare. I'm going to decree. I'm going to stand firm that if you will not compromise, if you will not sell yourself, if you will not get rid of your faith, if you will walk in faith and not by sight, that even though the fire gets hot, even though the fire gets difficult, God will always be in the furnace with you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And if it, listen now, listen now, listen, and if he does doesn't, I still won't bow. It wasn't until he saw the fourth. These boys, the Bible says they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. You know something? I've seen it many times where it's not easy. But for those who have not sacrificed, but for those who have not compromised, God always makes them shine. 